So today we're going to rebuild one of the last remaining teams in MLB without a World Series win. It's also probably one of the worst run organizations, and that's the Colorado Rockies. The Arenado trade is still absolutely terrible. On top of that, they're still paying part of his contract. Chris Bryant signing has really not gone well, and that's just with the injuries. And they've also let Trevor Story go for absolutely nothing, which I mean, Trevor Story has been injured too. So does that really, but they didn't even get a comp pick for it. On top of that, their main acquisitions this offseason were Nolan Jones and also Jerks and Profar. And it, it, it's just a mess. The farm system's not that great. The MLB talent's not there. We, we got to step in and we got to win a World Series. So of course, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button down below subscribe to the channel for new and enjoy the content and in the comment section give me your mvp picks your mvp predictions for the al Ooh, do i go boring and say judge again i think you're don if your don can stay healthy i think he's gonna have a monstrous season it does hurt that he's a dh but i mean i guess otani's also in the mix too if trout stays healthy he's in the mix. i'm gonna go your don i'm gonna still pick your don and for the nl i'm gonna Ooh, I'm going to go Manny Machado. I'm going to go Manny Machado. But let's talk about this team. I know recently Daniel Bard has stepped away from baseball once again to battle with um, anxiety, which props to him. This is a lot more important than baseball. So for him to worry about his his mental health, that's that's important. That's important. So, you know, and to think he was a guy that stepped away from baseball for what was it? Seven years? I believe it was. Yeah, seven years. And to come back and put up a 3.6 ERA and a 1.7 ERA. That's impressive. That's a, that's a feel good story right there. Yes things happen, right? Mentally, things happen. Physically, things happen. You know what? He's focusing on his health. That's that's the important thing. So um, looking at the rest of the team, though, CJ Crone hits the ball. Like that's that's what you're looking for with CJ Crone. But realistically, he becomes a free agent. Probably should cash in on him while you can. And I normally don't make trades in the first year of franchise. And I probably still won't because I might try to keep CJ Crone for another year after this season. Montero is there. You got Talia. You've got Brendan Rodgers who is another one of those guys that like really hasn't put it together and then i know he's actually injured currently there's trejo mcmahon nolan jones you've got tovar you've got amador chris bryant injuries jerks and profar super inconsistent throughout his career at one time was the number one prospect in baseball hasn't lived up to that you do have benny montgomery you do have zach bean so there are some prospects but what i'm thinking with this team is we just completely ignore pitching i'm not gonna like just get a bunch of bad pitchers but in real life it's really tough to lure top pitchers to base uh to cores because they're just essentially throwing away their career at that point because you can't pitch effectively at course you this you don't get the same spin you don't get the same movement it's not the same and that's why it's tough for the rockies to lure in those good talents because they can't they they don't have the pull you're basically asking a pitcher to go from like a low three a high two era to most likely a four and they have to completely change up their pitching because they can't rely on the same stuff so it's just tough with cores you can't really develop pitching you can't really lure in good pitching you kind of just have to hope that you find someone that can give you you know like a, a four era and you just hope that offense can lead you to victory and that's what we're going to do with this rebuild so let's get to the draft let's see if we can get some really good offensive players and if not if i can draft a pitcher i mean that might be the way to do it honestly that might be the way to do it good 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 get good pitching i'll figure it out let's get to the draft all right so for the draft we have pick number nine which pushed me in a really weird spot because i really wish we had a higher pick because this guy looks insane. I want him. Um, I mean, actually, like, like he looks really good, too. Um, I wish we could get him. Um, realistically, whenever I have a later on pick in the draft, there's always a really good player that I want. Like, he looks solid, too. And him. Luckily, he's ranked 43rd, and we have him at 4. He's not as good as the other ones, though. You know what I mean? Like, he does have some good stats. We have a couple closers. There were a lot of good relievers in this draft and uh we'll see what we can get you know position player wise like this guy doesn't look terrible we'll see if we can get him um this one also doesn't look too bad and neither does geraldo da costa actually looking at geraldo da costa he looks like a safe pick he looks like he's gonna hit very well maybe 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 and then we've also got fabio rodriguez who potential is a little bit lower but he does look like he could be decent too so it really just depends on what falls to us so I kind of want Dewey Zito just based on the name though. That's a pretty good name. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm I'm the two players I want, I'm not gonna get. So dang. So yeah, the outfielder that I really wanted, which hitter too, goes number one overall to the Pirates. 
of course of course of course when i want position players there's always good ones just way ahead of me in the draft ah all right who's this oh he's got stirrups too he's gonna be a baller michael montez we have him at number one yeah again just another player i just knew i wasn't gonna be able to get and the tigers are gonna choose are the tigers gonna be like usually one of the three picks is kind of i don't want to say a bust but one that you normally wouldn't choose and this is going to be what was that harper it said harnet Hartnet. either way you know another one of those good picks so all three picks were pretty good so far and you know what we'll, we'll work our way down to the the draft board let's let's see what happens because i really don't know what to expect all right we're on the clock this guy was drafted it might be good i don't know i didn't really draft him uh, or scout him fabio rodriguez I, this was the guy that i said would be like one of those safe picks i don't hate that pick um let's see who else this was the outfielder that i talked about that i kind of wanted he got taken dewey leonard who was 73rd on our board i mean what do we go with then what do we go with here i don't know i kind of want to take terrence bryant i also like omar murillo he looks good who else do we have still available ah, man let me see. henry francisco good home runs per nine good control which is nice velocity breaks good but the hits per nine is a little bit low i think i'm not gonna go a closer even though he's probably gonna be absolutely nasty do we zito good hits per nine control is okay velocity break honestly he's not bad either lefty two six foot four rosales man i kind of want to take this third baseman i'm really intrigued by taking a third baseman just no power at all and I feel like we need we need a little bit of oomph in the lineup, but at the same time, I kind of want to take a will Henry will Henry Francisco fall to us to our next round. We're gonna find out because we're gonna take Terrence Bryant, and we're gonna be disappointed when I do take him and he ends up being really really bad. But we'll find out. Let's go to our next pick. Every I skipped it. All right, so I accidentally skipped the draft. Let's uh, see what the CPU picked for us. Okay, so we had Francisco, which is our second round. Whoa. They took Henry Francisco. We got him in the second round. Uh, ha, ha, yes, sir. We also got Ron Armstrong, who we had a little bit scouted. We had him non-ranked originally. Now he's up to 30. We also have Dave Fowler, 98 potential. Maybe, maybe the CPU, uh, maybe the CPU did a little bit of work here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add Armstrong because I need to scout him a little bit. And then we're also going to add Francisco and then we'll get that interest up. But you know what? From the picks, maybe, maybe we got a little lucky. All right. Let's see how we did. Let's see how we did. Let's see how we did. 86, 88, 93, 94, 80. Not bad. Not bad. We did miss out on our final two picks, the catcher and the other guy. I forgot what the other guy was, um, but we missed out on them. They declined the offer, but you know what? You're not... Hey, CPU coming in clutch for me accidentally skipping my draft. But if you guys need draft help and like a tutorial, tips, tricks, whatever, I released my scouting video last night. It went, it went up pretty late, kind of like all my videos have been. Go check it out. It's on the channel. I'll probably leave a link to it if I can remember. If not, I'll put it in the pinned comment also if you want to check it out after this video. But yeah, my scouting tips video has dropped on the channel. All right, so let's go see the rest of the draft to see if we missed out on anybody that could have been cool. Like Dewey Zito, we looked at him. I thought, you know what, that's cool. But I, I kind of wanted to draft a position player. And I feel like we, we we drafted a good one, right? He may not have the highest of potential, but I feel like we got a pretty solid player in what we've got. So let's see. He was drafted before us. Rafael Doe was a player that they drafted. And I was like, who is this? Actually looks decent. 89 potential, 68 overall. I just didn't scout him. That, that's kind of what it came down to. DaCosta, 83 potential. Reliever, center fielder with 95 potential, but those hitting stats are atrocious. Wow. Wow. Okay. 81 for Dewey Leonard. Pay 79. Quintero, 85 potential. Okay. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we did really well. Yeah. I feel like we did, we did pretty good. Like Patrick O'Hara, man, he's good. 69 overall look at those numbers versus righties man that's a good that's a good outfielder that's a solid outfielder 90 potential as well I'm, I'm intrigued by that one i'm intrigued by that one i looked at this shortstop i looked at this shortstop he was actually kind of like on my radar yeah i should have added him to the to the draft queue just in case he was available that we could have selected him but not a bad pick 93 potential 64 overall he actually looks pretty solid but you know what 66 overall look at that vision the discipline the clutch the the contact numbers as well fielding not terrible which normally is pretty terrible no secondaries which is a little bit unfortunate but um i'm happy with that good speed too 
So there's that. Henry Francisco, hits per nine is pretty low, but everything else looks pretty solid. Armstrong, Dave Fowler with 94 potential. I like, see, I like seeing that. And then 80 potential for Sam Sharp. So again, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. 75 and 87. Honestly, for us playing in the West, obviously, but we also kind of play the whole MLB as well. I'm pretty happy with that. We weren't the worst team in the in the West. And we kind of sit right in the middle of the pack, nine games out of the wild card. Not, not bad at all. And then like not even close to being the worst team in like entirety of baseball. We were literally like right in the middle way better than I anticipated. So awards wise, Christian Walker's MVP along with Mike Trout, Jacob deGrom and Justin Verlander are the Cy Young winners. Garrett Cooper and Carlos Correa are the batting title winners. Okay, Wander Franco is there. Ooh, okay, Kenley Jansen and Edwin Diaz relievers of the year. And then obviously Kodai Senga is running away with the rookie of the year along with Gunnar Henderson. So let's see, let's see with my squad was putting up this year jose arena get out of my team uh brent Suter, normally a pretty solid lefty in the game definitely has been hit with a little bit of a a decrease in overall a downgrade and same thing with potential so he's not as good unfortunately justin lawrence should have way better potential all right like you know what i mean like he is nasty is it justin lawrence who's the one that throws frisbees is it is it justin lawrence i'm pretty sure it is he did have a bad year last year, so I do I do understand why. But the dude's got nasty stuff. Like it is, it, it's him that has the slider that oh, it's so good. Um, unfortunately, he's got deep potential, 68 overall, but he had a good year, so he probably won't be a long term piece for this rebuild. But we'll see. Brad Hand. Oh, okay. So yeah, sure, why not? Denilson Lamette, Pierce Johnson, and then haven't didn't give him a shot, but I might next year. His stats look pretty good. Daniel Bard probably gonna maybe he'll retire and we'll be okay but he wasn't bad either and then looking at our starters Marquez was pretty solid pretty solid I'll take that Gomber was okay would like to get him out of that two spot maybe drop him a little lower in the rotation but realistically everybody's kind of garbage and we don't really have anybody to look at right now maybe Tyler Kinley can help us out in the bullpen but realistically pitching is gonna be tough Pitching is gonna be really tough so, how did Alan Trejo do? He's got C potential, even though the season didn't go great. Montero is another guy I want to get called up soon. Let's see who else. Maybe Talia as well. So, there's some names, but at the same time, I forgot Mike Moustakis was a um, was a Rocky. But, let's see here. Nolan Jones is up to a 70. Maybe we get him into the team. First righties, at least. Looks pretty solid. You know, Brendan Rodgers. I really just want him facing lefty. So, we're going to need... Actually, 67 contact versus right's not bad. So he might be an everyday guy that we have to find a way to get into the team. Randall Gritchick was not good. Sean Bouchard, not great. And then that was just our bench. So looking at our starters, Jonathan Daza is usually good for like a season or two. But I'd like to find a better center fielder for the future. Charlie Blackman's going to regress as anticipated. But not a, not a bad run with the Rockies at all. CJ Crone had a really solid year. So if I can bring him back for like a season or two. And then maybe flip them next year would be awesome. Chris Bryant, not terrible. It's just we're paying him a lot of money and I need it to be more than not terrible. I need it to be like normal Chris Bryant, you know, who actually mashes. McMahon wasn't ideal. Jerks and Profar honestly was pretty nasty. Holy cow. And then that's that. Oh, wait, no. Diaz. I can work with those numbers. I can work with those numbers for sure. Oh, yeah. And then we have Tovar, who he's a little bit of a project. Realistically, I'm looking for Bean. And also Montgomery. Where is Montgomery? Is Montgomery in single A? Let's see here. Single A. Yep. 71 overall. Still got a little bit of time. And then let me double check Veen's numbers. Probably by season four, we can get those two into the team. But yeah, Tovar. We're, we're gonna stick with Tovar. I'm gonna I'm gonna be patient with him. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna figure something out. Let's get into the offseason. Let's see who wins the World Series. It is going to be the Mets over the Rays. Okay. And Daniel Bard did not retire. So we're going to have to pay him one more year or let him walk and like find a way to trade him. CJ Crone, one year. Let's go. Okay, let's go two years. We'll bump it up to like what? Oh boy. Um, I think I'm going to have to pay him like. So I can't get any higher than this. All right, I'm going to go two years, 12 mil each year. Grichik. I'll think about. Profar, honestly, I shouldn't have to pay him too much. Like five mil, not terrible. 
and he looks like he, he'll be an okay platoon guy for us so i'm happy with that charlie blackman i'd like to bring him back but with how much he's decreasing i just i can't justify it lamette let's try to bring him in he's usually good for like two years out of the bullpen so if we can get that that'd be pretty helpful and i think i'm gonna let the rest walk so th those are the exclusive negotiations what do the tigers want no who are they offering me melton no get, get out of here get out of here with that garbage trade all right so i said i want offense i want to go crazy with the offense the thing is free agency this year is a little weak unless you're a pitcher so we have crone there Ugh, do i i don't need an infielder though because like i'd like to get jones and maybe jones takes over right field and then um brendan rogers i i said we want to get him in the lineup a little bit more so what is this this is first base which is crone so how else could i move this around i guess i could get a dh and just let profar be like our platoon guy that helps us out from time to time let me see the splits for some players i will also need an outfielder that hits lefties well so there's that and also an infielder that hits lefties well so i guess I guess we do just need what's Trejo's numbers versus what's his splits versus he's good versus righties. So another guy that doesn't really help me versus lefties. So I, I am going to need a guy that hits lefties well. And, I, and at the same time, I don't need a third baseman because we've got this guy who's probably going to be ready around the same time as Montgomery and Bean. And I don't want to block him. Plus, we already have McMahon. We technically do have Nolan Jones as well. So I think... Yeah, I think I think we just find like a, a like a platoon situation for the outfield. Someone that hits lefties well. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind rocking like Renfro to help us out with that outfield situation. Ian Happ's also an interesting one. Doesn't doesn't really play anywhere else besides left field though. I know he's played center, but he's a better left fielder. So, um, yeah, maybe Hunter Renfro gives me a piece that I could trade for the future. And then looking at it. That's really all we can do unless I go just like straight, what's it called, DH route and just try to bring in someone that can play DH like a Max Muncy. And then we also got to somehow bolster the pitching without going too crazy. We'll figure it out. All right, so I was looking for an outfielder. Luis Robert was kind of on my radar. I was like, okay, center field's kind of a weak position in MLB The Show this year. And I was like, you know what? He's coming off a bad year. This might be the time to capitalize on picking him up. Super friendly contract, by the way. I do have to trade CJ Crone, who I did just re-sign. But I'm willing to take that on a player who's got eight potential. He's eight years younger and he feels like a need. We do have Daza and we do have Benny Montgomery, but Benny Montgomery is not going to be ready for a few years and we can always move and shuffle around players. I'm getting rid of a pitcher that I don't want for the future. I'm getting rid of a catcher who I, I literally just signed like a month ago as a backup catcher just to kind of give us a little bit more depth. And then obviously CJ Crone was on my trade list come the deadline. And if I can get Luis Robert... I'm doing it. All right, let me talk to you about our transactions really quick because I just signed a, or I just signed a player that I I got to double check. Did I draft this guy and not sign him? Because B potential sitting in free agency, he was a player that got drafted and didn't get signed. So I got to double check. All right, wasn't a player I drafted. I, it, we drafted. I'm gonna I'm gonna search up their names. It was Fernandez who was a catcher. Where is he? Setting him for, oh, he's in AAA with, oh, who is that? Who is that? The Nationals, duh. So he got signed up by the Nationals and the other one was a reliever and I forgot their name, but I'm assuming they're gonna be towards the bottom. Oh, okay, we have we have the worst reliever in baseball. Nice, Um, let's see, I'm not gonna be able to find it, but let's see, did they get signed? I don't remember who it was. It wasn't Vasquez, it wasn't Barreto. Realistically, it didn't really matter because they weren't good. So we'll, we'll put it that way. Yeah, that's right. I said they weren't good. Either way, that guy looks pretty good. Um, add more depth to the team. Another position that like could help us out. Third and second. Bad fielding, good arm. I think I think we're going to leave him at third. Bad speed too. I was thinking maybe we put him in the outfield, but no. Nah. We'll, we'll leave him where he is. Looks solid. Pair him up with Terrence Bryant. I think we're looking pretty good at that third base position. We still have Nolan Jones and uh ryan mcmahon so looking at the team as a whole this is what we did this offseason frankie montas club option two-year club option 11 mil we'll see we'll see what happens with that and i also brought in alex wood on a one-year deal so realistically our team's probably gonna look something like this and then um bullpen wise called up kinley and then we signed reynaldo lopez that was about it i'm gonna hold on to daniel bard see if he can give us at least half a season try to flip him at the deadline 
and we'll go from there. Lineup wise, the bench is going to look like Daza, Trejo. I brought in Grossman because we needed a lefty hitting or a, yeah, a, a hitter who could hit lefty pitching. There we go. There it is. Or yeah, a lefty hitting batter. Okay. I see what, yeah, I, I needed a hitter that could hit lefties. There we go. Uh, Profar. And then I brought in Gary Sanchez, who in real life has recently signed with the Giants. McMahon, Robert, Bryant, Renfro, Jones, Montero, Rogers, Diaz, and Tovar. So that's the team as a whole. Looking at the farm system, I'm going to let Bean start out in double A. This guy actually doesn't look too bad. I don't know if he'll actually be good enough to feature in a rebuild. Uh, Benny Montgomery again, probably season four, season five. And I think that that's really about it. Amador, I don't know. His hitting stats are pretty low. That's going to be tough. We've already talked about Bryant and Benitez. Warming, burn a ball. Burn a bell. Again, one crazy name. Awesome name. And actually doesn't look too bad. So he's a guy that might be a little sneaky platoon situation for us. And then obviously Michael Taglia. Talia. Not Taglia. Talia. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Tolia. It might be Tolia. It might be Tolia. I'm going to call him Michael. Let's get through season two. So out of the players that we scouted, I'll just I'll just show you the one that I want and I'm not going to get. And it is the number one overall prospect. And no, no, number two overall prospect. But they have him at number one. This guy looks like he's going to be good. This guy looks like he's going to be really good. This guy might be a generational talent. And again, I'm not going to get the position player that I want. We did get a good third baseman last year, but like I, I kind of went heavy on the pitching this year. And the only one that like slightly intrigues me is this guy, but he's injured. So there's that chance that he's just like screwed with the potential being dropped because he is hurt there were some other position players that i like i looked at and i go maybe they'll be good but i don't know i just I, you, you get that feeling of like maybe maybe it's it's not the year you know that you go after a position player i don't know i don't know maybe we'll take a maybe a stab at a random one that we like don't have scouted at all but like i said i went heavy on the position or on the pitching and as you can see we've got this bobby monk guy who we have the 12th pick. There's no way he falls to us, but looks like he's going to be good. We've got Roger De Los Santos, 91st. We have him at 4. 95, we have this guy at 7. 68, we have this one at 8. 45, we have at 9. 93, we have at 10. Like, our scouts did the business this, this season. The thing is, a lot of these guys have low overalls, except for Bobby Monk. And so, realistically, I don't know if they'll even get a chance of featuring in this rebuild. I mean, maybe this guy, Aldo Diaz out of Kentucky but the main thing was I wanted to at least get some sort of pitching prospect because our pitching prospects have been really good in our rebuilds so I at least wanted to get somebody that might have a chance of featuring so we'll see we'll see we'll see I've got a bunch of them let's see who the first three picks are it's probably gonna be like Bobby Monk that uh left fielder that I want that I don't remember his name now and then somebody else that I also want so let's see here there's Monk so Bobby Monk the pitchers off the board all right, who's number two? Let's see who it is. Let's see who it is. Let's see who it is. It is. Is it that left fielder? I think it's the left fielder, right? That's the left fielder. And he's got the stirrups. This dude's going to be a baller. Barry McGill, he's going to be so good. So good. He's going to be unbelievable. He's, he's going to be ridiculous. All right, and then the third pick falls to the Royals. And it is... Who is this? Steve McNally. We had him at number two. 20 uh, number 22 overall in the class so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sim to the rockies pick and let's see what we got here all right so montez is gone vargas is the first baseman i wanted to scout this guy more i just ran out of time i think he he might be a little decent quinn slater okay gwyn oh it, it was bart gwyn it wasn't even quinn it was gwyn we've got Tippett, who's a really good closer and then donahue okay so the, yeah Okay, this guy could be good, could be good. All right, so it is time to pick ours. And I think, ooh, who do we go to? Opted out worries me a little bit, but also that overall is so low. That's like really low. Makes me think like, do I go someone that like, this guy doesn't look bad, controls a little low, or do we go like him? Again, controls low, home runs per nine is pretty good. Good pitch velocity. Like he's gonna be good. It's just like, all these overalls are really low. Like this guy's not bad, but again, I'm but overall, I, I, I wish it was a little bit higher. You know what I mean? At least like in the, the seventies. So like we could take Aldo Diaz who looks like he might be a little bit higher rated, but the potential is going to be a little bit less. So, you know what? Let's just go for, um, we've got what? 97 potential here, 87 to 99. 
But he looks so bad. Um, let's go... Let's take the fourth best player remaining. Supposedly. We'll take Roger De Los Santos. Who knows? All right, our next pick. We do... St Ooh, our, the shortstop that I wanted got taken. Who took him? Who took him? I don't remember his name, though. What was it? It was... Sid Duff. Sid Duff was on my board, but not the one I was looking at. It was Kevin Tobin. Dang. And then we also got this guy here. All right. So some of them, some of these position players that I wanted a little bit later in the, the draft are starting to get taken here. Earl Sampson went to the Mets and Sean Dixon went to the Orioles. Okay. So we still have, we still have Phillips. We still have Baez and we have Vasquez who I kind of like the looks of Vasquez. Phillips is number eight. No, Baez is number eight. Phillips is number seven. Man, hits per nine being that low worries me a lot. That is really low. I mean, everybody's is pretty low. Let's see what else we have on the board. We have Odell Manning. I'm just not liking any of these, these picks, man. Felix Diaz looks like he's a little bit later of a pick at 45. I guess we could try to sneak him in a little bit later in the, the draft. Do I have any other players scouted? First baseman, that's 184, 170s, high hundreds. What else? Can we get like lower? Maybe like closer to what pick I'm at, like the 30s? It's mostly pitchers. So I'm going to, I'm I think I'm going to have to take a, a shot at like a random position player and hope it works out. We're at 34. Anybody sitting around that ranking? Maybe the shortstop? Do I, do I take a little blind guess? That's a little blind stab at somebody. See if we get somebody good. Is it worth risking it? I just don't think it is. I think I'm just going to take the best player available. Let's go with maybe Baez. I think we're going to go with Baez. Let's go Baez. He looks so low rated though. All right, next pick. We have, I'm going to take Diaz for this one. He's a little bit right, closer to being MLB ready. And I just feel like let's get someone that's like a little bit closer to MLB ready. Felix Diaz is going to be my pick. We still have Vasquez here on the third round. I'll take him. Might as well. If he's still sitting there, there's no reason not to. And then we have a couple others who, again, this guy looks like he's pretty close to being MLB ready. Not that guy. This guy does as well. It's mostly pitchers though. Oh, I only had my pitcher board up. Let's see here. I think I'm gonna take a shot at somebody next round. I feel like that's the move. Just if they have a high potential, let's take a shot. So wait, oh, the guy that I literally just added to the board got, got snagged, Derek Glenn. What are the odds? What are the odds? Okay, so we're on the clock now. Let me see if I can find a player. Oh, there are only pitchers left. There's literally only pitchers. Oh, that's the top 100. Okay, we have this guy. We have him at 101. He looks pretty bad. We're at 116 right now. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, a stab in the dark, and we're gonna find we're gonna find something special here. I don't know who who's it gonna be, but we're gonna find somebody. I can't I can't risk that. <laughs> <laughs> not rated to 102 so he could be like close to mlb ready you know but like am i willing to risk that or do i want someone that's a little bit more of like a, it's going to take a little bit for them to develop i think we take i'm either going this first baseman or this left fielder the left fielder's potential is kind of like capped so it makes me think he's not going to be like that good this guy's super low rated though super low rated i'll take whatever whatever and we've got one more pick, two more picks. All right, Ponce got taken, or Ponce, however you prefer it. Ooh, boy, really good potential. We've got some really good potential pitchers. It's just their, their rating is so low, which is like a huge, huge disappointment. Cause like, I want someone that's close to being MLB ready, you know? So instead, I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll take Adam Iverson. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a stab in the dark at one more player. Let's see here, all players left. We are going to go with, I think I'm going to take that center fielder. Actually, maybe this left fielder in Marrero. Hold on, hold on. We had more first baseman available. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him. Um, all right, we're going to go with third baseman or left fielder. Left fielder, last pick. Let's go see how it went. We're at the deadline. I've already signed every single one of our draft picks. I'm going to get MJ Melendez, who the Cubs are not even using. And we're going to use him as our catcher. I know he's probably not going to end up being a catcher in real life, but I need a catcher for the future. We're going to make MJ Melendez that guy. And we're going to trade Hunter Renfro straight up for MJ Melendez. Yeah, it should have happened, but it is. And then the other player that I want to trade actually is um, our pitchers. So I'm going to trade 
Alex Wood, he's having a pretty strong season. And the thing is, I need pitching. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get, like, man, I just... Is it worth trading for pitching? Or, or can we just sign it? Because, like, I'm looking at our offense going, I kind of like it right now. And I feel like... Like, Zach Veen's right around the corner, man. Like, I think he could be called up next year and do some damage for us. So, I think... I think we maybe maybe package him with Bard and like let me get one of like the best closers in baseball. And I am going to get Felix Bautista's potential went down. That's so tough. What about Camilo Duvall? Yeah, we're gonna get Camilo Duvall. I normally don't trade within the division, but closers are pretty pretty tough to get. So we're gonna rock like that, and then I'm just gonna go with I guess Rollison can get called up for the rest of the year. We're we're in last, so I'm not really predicting us to be pretty pretty good or anywhere near the the postseason race. We're 43 and 62, which puts us 11 games out of the yeah. We're not even we're not even going to be close to it. So who else could I trade while they're still doing pretty well? I think that's I think that's kind of it. Like Pierce Johnson, Pierce Johnson needs to get traded. Let's get a reliever. P Pierce Johnson's killing it. Can I? Thank you. Pierce Johnson, where are you? And let's go, let's go get another reliever. We are going to go to. Why did the Brewers have crochet? I want crochet. I can't get crochet. What about Tanner Houck? Can't get Tanner Houck either. It's, it's probably gonna have to be like somewhere in this range. So we're gonna go for. We are gonna go get. Can I get AJ Puck? I'm not too far off. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. I can potentially go and get AJ Puck. Not Jimmy Herget. Matt Brash. Uh, I'm going to pass on Matt Brash. I might get him in one rebuild, though. That might be something that I test out for sure. Let's see. Who else? Seth Martinez. I'm out on that. Alcala. What about Alcala? Okay, I'm not too far off of that. Let's give them Raiden Ward, and that should get the deal done. All right, that might be it. That might be it. I think that kind of covers everything. I would like to get a pitcher, but I feel like we're going to we're gonna open up a little bit of money. Man, Kyle Freeland's making that kind of money, huh? Why would the Rockies do that? Oh, yeah, they're a bad organization. Like, I know I'm ripping on the Rockies quite a bit, but we're going to, yeah, we're, that's, it's just such a bad, like, the moves they make just make no sense at all. It's crazy. I don't think Black, Zach Plesak is going to be that good. I'm going to take a chance on him this season. Uh, actually, hold on. Let's go. I just want someone that's going to be like kind of cheap because I, I kind of want to invest in the off. I don't know. I, I, I said I wanted to invest in the offense, but like I kind of like the way our, our offense looks right now and it's starting to like come together. So I might end up just like completely disregarding what I said at the beginning of the rebuild where I said, let's pay a lot of offensive players. Let's make a really juiced offense and not care about. The, the pitching but i might end up having to care about the pitching a little bit more and just spending money there so what i'm gonna do is you know what i'm gonna what was that trade not brian bayo i'm gonna take please it's a super cheap trade and i'm gonna give them who can i give them sean brochard and kaiser and then that's a new pitcher for us ah, it'll work we'll hold it down like that yeah this might just end up being like a, a normal rebuild where we end up with um, just spending on pitching because I, I like this offense. I mean, look at the offensive numbers that the team's putting up. Like, they're fairly solid numbers. Like, I, I feel like we've got a good squad. Zach Veen's going to come up and play right. Benny Montgomery hasn't played a lot in the AAA yet, so I've, i got to change up that. Or double A, I should say. So i got to let him get some more ABs. But realistically, I feel like we're, we're looking pretty solid. I, I kind of like the team. So let's let's get through the deadline and let's talk about the picks that we took. So what do we have here? Oh, whoops. Um, I, I've signed everybody, um, so it doesn't matter. So next day, let's see how we did. We did very well, very well. It's just everyone's super low rated, except for Diaz, who we knew was going to be a little bit better, but low potential. And I'm OK with that. This is a guy who can come in probably next year help us out of the pen realistically like a long relief situation but 58 overall 47 overall 53 overall 97 potential so yeah uh man these might be trade pieces let's see who we passed on or missed out on i looking at the picks so far not a lot a lot of good relievers 
but we didn't really miss a lot of low rated players in this draft wow yeah 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 we knew this guy was gonna be good yeah and we missed out on him yeah man that's that's frustrating frustrating sorry that's man i wanted him that's that's really about it oh and bobby monk with 97 potential 73 overall but that left fielder oh wow johnny lentz we passed on this guy okay all right so we missed we missed one was the that outfielder for the reds but i, I like the draft it's just they're super low rated so we're not gonna see them that's tough 71 and 91 so really similar to what we did last year we have a league leader zach plusek apparently is like the best pitcher in the world freddie freeman and jordan are the mvps cease and walker are the cy young winners i'd probably give it to one of these two over walker but that's just me um freddie freeman and Vinny pasquantino who's actually with the astros now that would be a crazy pickup for the astros uh reliever of the year goes to david bednar who's now with the cubs and jason adam and then nick gonzalez who got traded from the pirates to the tigers Anthony Volpe is now with the White Sox. What? Uh, rookie of the year goes to Nick Gonzalez and James Wood of the Nationals, who at 73 overall, they called them up. Interesting. Jamar Johnson also got called up and Elijah Green. Good Lord. Nationals are really trying to speed up this rebuild, huh? Holy cow. All right, let's take a look. Let's see how we are, uh, how we're doing. Um, Nothing too crazy right now. Justin Lawrence continues to like hold his rating, even though it says he's going down. I might try to sneak another season out of him. Tyler Kinley was solid. Reynaldo Lopez, again, was also solid. Alcala was fantastic. Wow, those are great numbers. Those are fantastic numbers. Gilbreth had only two innings of work, but I think he's actually going to be one of the main lefties in the bullpen for us next year. So we'll keep that in mind. And then our closer, Camilo Duval. Yeah, not the best, but we'll, we'll see what we can do moving forward. Marquez, we've got, ooh, is that our final year with Marquez? We'll try to re-sign him. I feel like at this point, he might as well just stay with the Rockies. Montas is now regressing. Why after the deadline did he decide to regress? How much are we paying him? 11? I might still bring him back. Sensatella was solid. Gomber as a four slash five, I'm okay with that. And then obviously Zach Plesek. So realistically, we're probably looking something like, like this, depending on if I bring back Montas or not which I don't know who else I would turn to. So probably will. <laughs> I don't know. It depends. I might also, I might decline it because I might be able to get him for cheaper than 11 mil. So we'll, we'll, we'll think about that. Daza, like I said, he's just a good bench bat. So I'll probably keep him around. Robbie Grossman is regressing, but was, was solid. I'll take a 345 on base percentage. Diaz wasn't as good as he was in the previous season. Gary Sanchez, you know, we rock three catchers. That's how we do it. And who got sent down? Taro, how are we looking? Yeah, not good. Not good. Um, what is this guy looking like? I mean, we might have some decent little prospects starting to form around here because I'm I'm liking some I'm liking some of the numbers. Okay, so McMahon, not necessarily a leadoff guy. The thing is, who am I replacing and like how am I getting a leadoff guy? I, realistically, it would be the shortstop. And I don't want to get rid of Tovar because I know he is a piece that it has a future with the with the Rockies. So what we could do here is we've got Veen, who who's he's up to a 75. He's going to be in the lineup next year. The thing is, again, he's not a leadoff guy. So who is my leadoff guy in this team? Robert? That 305 on base percentage says otherwise. Chris Bryant? I don't see Chris Bryant as the leadoff guy, but Nolan Jones, I feel like he's kind of earned a spot in the team. Michael Tolia, maybe not. Maybe he's the backup and we go jones at first i guess we could try jones at first veen and right profar continues to be like our platoon situation and then we still need a dh so i guess or maybe we could assign a first baseman i don't know um but that's we're kind of getting distracted here uh robert was like identical to last season bryant was good. I like those numbers. I like Profar's numbers too. I know he's regressing, but I might try to bring him back for one more season. We've got Nolan Jones, who I I, I don't hate those numbers. I think I think that's something to kind of build on for sure. Tolia, Brendan Rod. There we go, Brendan Rodgers. That's that looks good. I don't like that. And then Tovar. So we need the offense to wake up for sure. We definitely do. And I might, I might have to invest in some pitching. I might. The Braves defeat the Angels in the World Series. Let's get into Season 3. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to see what we can do with the team now. So, Marquez, let's go like three years. 
30 mil. Three years, 30 mil. I, I feel like that's a that's a fair that's a fair little little deal right there. Montas, I'm gonna decline this one. Profar, I said let's get one more season with you. I'll give you six mil. I'll give you six and a half mil. If he doesn't take it, that's fine. Diaz as a backup. We'll go one year, three mil. Sanchez can go. Actually, Sanchez is younger. Did I just offer him a withdraw that off? Oh, I offered him a qualifying offer. He's gonna accept that. 20 mil? No. Alright, after our exclusive negotiations, Profar and Sanchez haven't signed just yet. And I've been kind of tinkering with the lineup, figuring out what we could do. Maybe Chris Bryant moves to DH. We let Nolan Jones play left field, and then we go out and sign a first baseman. Cause like I like Michael Tolia, but like I don't I don't know if he's gonna be the guy for us. And I, if I can get like a really big name first baseman, that would be huge. Bean's gonna come in and play right field, obviously. And also, yeah, first base is kind of a thing, but like Chris Bryant plays first base. He played a little bit of first base with the Cubs. He wasn't great, but like, is that the move? You know, like, is that something that could be a possibility? Because if that's the case, then like I could put Jones back as the DH. And then what we could do is get a really big name outfielder. And like there's Santander that's available. There's Soto that's available. Like Soto's a big pickup. I could also try to make a trade, but realistically, I don't know if we have the pieces to do that. And like, what sort of trade could we do that would be like, dang, that is totally worth it. You know what I mean? Hold on, do the Braves have Eloy? What? They always do some crazy trades, man. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm like trying to think, wait, this guy got traded from the Pirates? What? What is going on? All right, um, I, w I want him so bad, man. There's, I bet you this is so easy to trade for, hold on. All right, let me see. You can have Nolan Jones. Yeah, I mean, that's it's too easy. Trejo as well. I'm not going to trade for him, though. Jordan. Is it possible? Is it possible? I don't think it's going to be. It's not going to be. It's not. Oh, Jordan would be so nice. But yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think. Sal Frelick? Frelick? Steven Kwan is an interesting one. And that would be the leadoff hitter that we need. So Steven Kwan might... And he might not be too difficult to trade for either. And it's 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 nothing too great. Like it's not a super flashy signing or anything, but like it gives that gives me exactly kind of what we need, a leadoff hitter. And that that fits exactly what we need. So like as much as like I think this is a stupid idea to move Chris Bryant to first, I think taking him out of the outfield, moving him to first base, limits him like running around and breaking his busted knees. And then we could have Nolan Jones on left, Bean in right, Robert in center, and then Tolia heads to the bench, and we we get um who do who did we just say we were or no Jones will be in um the DH. We could also make Chris Bryant the DH to let Nolan Jones play first too. That's also a possibility. And then Stephen Kwan is our left fielder. I think that makes more sense. I'm gonna do that. So that means I'm just going to spend money on pitching. I need at least one starter, maybe a little little bit of bullpen help because I don't know if Justin Lawrence is going to hold his rating. Other than that, I kind of like this team. So I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to be patient with Tovar. I'm not going to rush it. So and we've also got like those 900 third basemen like Terrence Bryant, who is going to be in double A. We've got Dominguez, who I guess at 24 years old, we can try him as a uh, like a bench bat because realistically, he's really only good versus righties he's kind of giving me nolan jones without the power vibes and essentially he can he can just help us out off the bench against yeah okay that works let's get a pitcher all right for some reason the cubs are willing to offer me brandon hughes for El El elias diaz or elias diaz who just signed a 20 million dollar contract because i was an idiot and accidentally offered him a qualifying offer i'm gonna take brandon hughes um, I need a lefty bullpen arm anyway, so that works out perfectly, which probably means it's the end for Justin Lawrence. Also, Denilson Lamette. I totally forgot we had him in the team too. So, ooh, how are we going to do this? Lamette might just not pitch this year. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. That might be the thing. Um, and then Brandon Hughes will take over for Lawrence. And then we'll, it'll it'll be like this. And then we'll, we'll get our starter in, which I currently have an offer for Mr. Corbin Burns. See what happens. Ryan Rollison, Elio Harris Montero, and Matthew Nelson are getting me Stephen Kwan. We talked about it. I think he might be a good little leadoff guy for us. 
and now he's gonna slide in here which i think we might actually have an extra player up in the majors now who Ooh, who's getting sent down? I think it's going to be Jake Berger for right now. Actually, do I need that lefty hitter off the bench? I do. I do. So sadly, I think it's Michael Tolia who gets sent down. Um, Hey, man, it, it happens. It happens. So looking at the team now, I tried to get Corbin Burns. He turned me down. He went to the Padres instead. And so I took the next youngest pitcher, which was Mike Soroka. And I believe we got him in the last rebuild. And I, I try to avoid getting the same players in back-to-back -back rebuilds unless it's a reliever just because relievers are kind of tough to come by anyways but i i looked at him or it was it was it was either soroka or um zach wheeler but zach wheeler being 34 years old i was a little worried that he was just going to decline immediately so the contract 17 mil over the next five years which honestly is not too bad for a player who's got b potential he's 27 overall so he should improve a little bit more and then we still have police act we still have sensatella marquez is in here as well and then gomber this is really the one where i'm like eh, man felix diaz is gonna i'm gonna give him a shot at this long relief role just because if you look at the rest of the pitchers that we have yeah um so yeah we'll we'll see what we can do there and then we've got hughes kinley gilbreth lopez alcala and doval so i like it i like it a lot i think i think that's pretty solid next up Daza, Sanchez, Profar, Jake Berger, I signed in a one-year deal. I like that lefty numbers. That's kind of why I signed him. And then Trejo. So these are the bench bats. Solid. And then now that we have Quan, we have a leadoff hitter. And then we have Robert, Bryant. Veen is not going to be here. Let's go with who else is like decent hitting wise. Nobody really. So I guess we can go like, like yep. this. I don't like that. Oh man, we got a lot of lefties, huh? <laughs> Whoa. All right. So. Quan Robert McMahon, Chris Bryant, Nolan Jones, Brendan Rodgers, Veen, Melendez, and Tovar. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, here we go with our prospects. Uh, Drew Romo's just like, he looks like a good defensive catcher. Nothing against that. Um, we've also got Bryant, probably could come up next year with those hitting numbers. And then we've also got Benitez. So I'm going to keep my eye on. He might be like a little replacement for somebody if they don't show up. And then in the outfield, we've got like our 50s and stuff. Benny Montgomery, I think after this year, he's going to be pretty good. I think he'll be ready to come up next season. And then obviously, Veen being in the majors, I need Big P and Veen to do some damage. So yeah, we're ranked 15th, which if we get to the regular season, I think it's going to change. 23rd, okay. Makes a little bit more sense. All right, for year three's draft, I I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm going to skip it. I'm just going to show you who I, I signed. Our second overall pick declined us um which is our second round pick declined us which to be honest it was a player that i just took a complete stab at like i had 10 percent scouting and uh also had very low interest obviously and i couldn't i couldn't get him to sign so there's that but these are our picks we've got micah smart we've got david stone jonas Zapata, 87 potential robbie earnhardt with 78 luis lerma with 88 and pete smith with 77 let's see if there's any names that Oh, okay, 87 potential. I passed on this guy. I passed on this guy. I passed on that guy. That was uh, that was a player that I I it was either him or the guy that I drafted. Those were like one of the two like it was those were kind of the players I was looking at. And let me see if I can find another one that I passed on. Um, I mean, there's some good players here for sure, but. I had the ninth pick. Derek Kaufman was the guy that I wanted, and he went number one overall. So, 83 potential, 59 overall. Okay, I mean, it, uh, yeah. Who else? I'm trying to see who else there was. Ralph Tel Telshaw. Okay, wasn't wasn't on my radar. I'm not gonna lie, not on my radar at all. Honestly, I feel I feel like yeah there's some good ones jimmy higgins was actually this was the pitcher i wanted i wanted jimmy higgins and i wanted uh actually actually who went first and jimmy higgins got taken before me um 84 potential 70 overall um but yeah I, honestly nothing nothing too crazy that i'm noticing from the draft realistically i feel like we did fairly well 65 overall 91 potential and then our next guy has 94 potential but yeah the guy that i I wanted was Jimmy Higgins. I wanted to draft him and I, I didn't. Um, he got chosen, I think, a couple picks before me. And then the other one was uh, Kaufman, who was a third baseman. He went first overall. So I didn't even have a chance. And then obviously the Padres pick was the guy that I was torn between 
either taken him or the one that we actually went with, which I'm, I'm pretty happy with the player that we went with and I'm pretty happy with our picks overall. So yeah, not bad. 78 and 84, our best season so far. And you know what? I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So Nolan Gorman MVP, wow. Judge on the other side, Rodan and Severino MVPs. I might have given it to Nola or Burns, man. <sighs> Could have had him, but he went He went to San Diego, man. Come on. Um, Brian Abreu, reliever of the year, along with Ryan Helsley. Camilo Duvall was in the mix. And then Ryan Ward is your rookie of the year, along with Emerson Hancock on the other side. Rafael Doe, third baseman from the first year's draft. And then Guadalupe Almanza. That's a name right there. That, that's a power name right there. So let's take a look at our team. Felix Diaz. He doesn't have much more potential, but let me tell you what a season by the rookie. I like that. Brandon Hughes, really solid lefty. Probably one of my favorite lefties to pick up if you can get a reliever. Uh, Justin Lawrence came up for Denilson Lamette. Lamette came up and did a good job. He took over for... Who did he take over for? Uh, Kinley. Kinley was having a tough season, as you can see was not going well so that's that's who i called up uh lawrence for and i wait no 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 i called up i called up lamette to take over for kinley because kinley was struggling there we go the lucas gilbreth i wasn't doing well he had like a six era at the deadline and i didn't make any trades this year because i wanted to i wanted to see how this team would do because i felt like this was our best team yet and I kind of wanted to see how some of the players were going to do. And I wanted to see if I wanted to keep them or not. And really, this was kind of like a make or break season for some of them. And I wanted to see if we could uh, keep keep them or we needed to get rid of them. And bullpen wise, I feel like we're, we're in a good spot. I feel like we really are. Lopez, starting to regress. He might be a player I don't pick up his option. And we look to spend cash a little bit on a, a bullpen arm. But looking at our starters, please sec. I can work with that. You know, Soroka is pretty solid as well. Marquez. So realistically, we're probably looking at Soroka, Marquez, Lisak. Sansatella. Ooh. But as a four for 10 mil, like I can't complain about that kind of month, like that performance. And same thing with Gomber. Like I, I don't hate this rotation. We do have Dave Fowler who K's per nine is super low, but the other stats look very similar to what Felix Diaz has. And look at the numbers that Felix Diaz put up. So I'm going to keep my eye on Fowler. We also have another one who we've got like Vasquez, De Los Santos. We've also have, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? We have another one. We have another pitcher. I think that has B potential. Where is he? Oh yeah. Domingo Baez, but he's 60 overall. So he's a, he's a little, he's a little ways away. But realistically, Dave Fowler might be a guy to keep our eye on. So lineup wise, Tolia got called up for Jake Berger. Yeah, Jake Berger was pretty disappointing. Not going to lie. That's pretty bad. Trejo, pretty disappointing as well. Benny Montgomery up to a 76. I still want those hitting stats to be a little bit higher, man. If we can get those hitting stats just a tad bit higher, I think he'd be pretty good. I think Warming Bernaval could be a good little platoon guy for us with those hitting stats. And then obviously we have Dominguez and Terrence Bryant. Terrence Bryant might get the call up fairly soon. So Daza, really good off the bench. Really happy with those numbers. Gary Sanchez, gross. Profar, yeah, I think his time has come, unfortunately. He's, he's been one of our more consistent bench bats up until this point. Steven Kwan's our leadoff guy. I'm pretty happy with the numbers he put up. I wish it was a little bit better, but we can work with that. Robert is starting to put some things together, which is awesome. McMahon, ooh, yikes. All right, um, if you're going to be putting up those numbers, we might have to turn to our younger guys. Uh, Chris Bryant also kind of regressing a little bit. Nolan Jones, honestly, not, not terrible. Not terrible. Good average, good on base percentage. If we can get that OPS a little closer to 800, we're in business. Brendan Rodgers still putting up really good numbers. Love that. Veen struggled. Yep, that's tough to see. And then Melendez, his average is low, but the on-base percentage at 340 it's pretty decent, pretty decent. And then Tovar struggling as well. So McMahon and Bryant, man, not, not the time to be starting to regress a little bit. Um, I've changed Terrence Bryant to have secondary position of second base. With that arm, I just feel like third base, probably not the best. And I feel like 6'1", second base, he can play second base. Yeah. Um, and then we all, then we still have Dominguez, who's got the cannon over there at third. So these two start to regress at this time not not the best time because i i could be in the market for a first baseman 
100%. Because, like, Tolia I, I, just doesn't have it for me. Just doesn't have it for me. Jake Berger is not the guy either. And realistically, I don't, I don't really see anybody in our farm system that can do that. So, with that in mind, I guess we could make Nolan Jones first base, but DH is fine. We could go out and spend on a first baseman and then let Domingue, not Dominguez, Bryant, Bryant play third. Terrence Bryant, not Chris Bryant. That might be the move. Rangers defeat the Dodgers. Now let's get to the po postseason slash, I mean, off season. And now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna figure this out. So exclusive negotiations. I'm gonna turn this one down. It's five mil. I think I can spend five million on a reliever that won't regress this year. Please sack. I'm gonna give him a three year deal for maybe like six, ooh, eight mil. Yeah, I'll even give him a player option to sweeten the deal a little bit. Comber. Ooh, he, he is coming off a good year, but is he gonna do it again? Also, is Lamette gonna do it again? I'm going to take a chance. Oh, he wants nothing. He wants nothing. I'll take that. 100%. Gary Sanchez can go. Profar is going to go. I'm going to sign Gomber. I'm going to do a one-year deal. I'll offer him a rotation spot. Six mil. I think that's pretty pretty cheap. And um, I'm also going to probably sign another pitcher. Or we could trade for one at the deadline if things don't go. I Gomber did enough to earn a spot. Uh, like I can't take that away from him. And then I got to lock this guy up. Can't let him leave. 15 million a year is so much money, though. But you know what? Let's do it. Player option, five years. There we go. All right. Offseason time. What do we say? First base? First base or I, I guess DH, technically. First base, DH. And then what spot is this? Oh, Rodgers didn't sign. Uh-oh. We might be in the market for a couple different positions. So we could go Vladdy. We could go Brand Drury, Telez. Is there like a third baseman? There isn't outfield ah man i was kind of hoping for like a big name available but not not really how's nico horner compared to brandon rogers or brendan rogers really similar really similar how much does nico horner want a little bit more like what four million more no way more yeah about mm, about four million more yeah renifo not renifo arise and also renifo's there like vladdy makes a lot of sense but also, Telez, Josh Naylor. Thing is, if Josh Naylor, hold on, is Chris Bryant only good versus lefties? He is. We could go a Naylor Bryant combo. A 26 mil for a platoon guy is stupid money, though. But it might just be what I have to do. And I think Telez, it's Telez versus lefties, he's versus righties. I think Telez, that, that might not be a bad move. Or Naylor, one of the two. I want to get Vladdy, but I just got him recently in a Diamondbacks rebuild, and I feel like let's 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 space out our our pickups. So I think maybe Naylor versus righties only. We'll stick with Rogers because he's been good. Where like I sh I shouldn't have to replace him. I feel like he's done good enough to earn his spot. I mean, also I could move McMahon to first, right? He's got the glove, he's got the height, and then sign a third baseman, which Kata. Urias. Man, they're they're really kind of like killing me here with the with the options. Man, free agency is gonna be pretty weak the next couple of years, huh? You're gonna have to hope that you you can sign your players. Good lord. Yeah, I don't know. It's in four off getting Bryce Harper. Yep. For Michael Tolia, Jaden Hill, and Benjamin Sams. I'm gonna see actually hold on. Um Okay, that doesn't work. Trade Gomber. I could trade Gomber. I might. And then trade for a pitcher. Yeah. Bryce Harper, get in the team. All right. And now I'm going to trade for a pitcher. And um, hold on. Let me see how this is going to work. Let me let me get it lined up. All right. I'm going to get Garrett Crochet for Tyler Kinley, Jake Berger, and Coco Montes, which means I have a spot open now because this is going to be the team. We got, we got a few lefties, quite a few lefties. I'm actually going to go like this. And then I'm then going to call up Dave Fowler. I'm going to see how it goes. I, I have a couple pitchers that I'm going I'm to keep my eye on just in case things go a little, a little south. But this is the team. So, yeah, we got Chris Bryant and his buddy Bryce Harper on the team. Chris Bryant only hits lefties well now, so there's no real reason to keep them in versus righties. But, yeah, this team looks solid. I'm liking it. I'm also like keeping an eye on to see when i can call up terrence bryant and domingo benitez along with benny montgomery 
And then I also have a crazy amount of pitching prospects. So if need be, we can bundle up one of them or two of them or three of them and get us a really solid starter. So we'll see what happens. But overall, I, I like the team. I didn't really spend much in free agency like at all. And I just feel like this is the move. I got Genesis Cabrera. That was my pickup this offseason. So let's see how it goes. We are currently, I need to see who I need to extend really quick because there are going to be some free agents. So let's go. Let's go like that. That was a little bit too much money realistically, but I'm, I'm, I'm seeing who we got to sign. Okay, I think we're good after that. So let's see. Regular season, we are 19th. Better than what we were before. Season four, playoffs, 100%. 162 is the record. We're going to be a wild card team taking on the Dodgers. What did we miss the post? The uh, two games. Good Lord. Okay. We were crazy good. League leaders Bryce Harper had the most RBIs and walks, which is awesome to see. And awards Bryce Harper MVP. There we go. So I'm talking about Corey Seager on the other side. Soto with the Red Sox. Luis Castillo and Julio Urias are your Cy Young winners. Austin Meadows and Corey Seager batting title. Joe Jimenez, really winning reliever of the year along with Alexis Diaz. Doval is like second place every single time. And then Bobby Miller now with the Reds. So are they going to have Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, and Bobby Miller all on that team? And then Brian Ramos for the White Sox. I'm going to check that out. Do they have... Are they just... Yeah. Gallon, Lodolo, Green, and Bobby Miller, and Luis Garcia? Did they win the Central? They made the postseason. What's their offensive lineup looking like? Those that that's a nasty pitching lineup. Wilson Contreras on the bench. Danny Jan. What is this team? Okay, let's take a look at our squad. How did we do as a, a squad? Okay, so this yeah we gotta fix it. All right, Dave Fowler had 88 innings, and as you can see, it, it's a tough tough first season. But 23 years old. I'll take it. Not bad for a long relief role. Brandon Hughes was fantastic. Danilsa Lamet was also quite good. I mean, so far, so good. Ugh. Tough. Tough. Crochet, again, kind of kind of the same thing. A little bit high ERA, a little bit high whip. And Alcala, but Doval. Doval's holding it down in the bullpen for us. Soroka, solid ace at the top of the rotation. Love to see it. Marquez right behind him, giving him a good two spot. Plesak in the three spot, also really good. Sensatella, where has that been? Oh, I guess he gave it to us in 2024 too. All right, and then Felix Diaz. I mean, talk about a guy that was not really, I was just expecting him to be like a six starter, long reliever, maybe get a chance, give him one, one season, see what happens. He comes in, fifth starter, locked down, killed it. Lineup wise, Benny Montgomery got called up for Daza and put up very similar numbers. I will show you Daza. There it is. Similar numbers. It's okay. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Chris Bryant started to regress. I kept him in the lefty lineup and he hit lefties. That's what I'm looking for him to do. McMahon struggled and you're probably thinking that's not too bad of a season. It's not, but you know what? We've got Terrence Bryant who small sample size. We'll, we'll work with it. Uh, Tolia, not too bad. Not too bad at all. I'll definitely be pretty happy with eight home runs and eight doubles and 35 hits. Yeah, that's pretty good. Almost half your hits were extra base hits. Um, math 16 times 2 is 32 yeah yeah okay yeah that's right and then drew romo backup catcher pretty solid so steven kwan at the top of the lineup was our was our leadoff guy that's what we needed him to do he got on base robert right behind him fantastic season love to see those numbers this is where things get a little bit bad we gotta we gotta sort this out because nolan jones boy do i have somebody else i could turn to Maybe McMahon. I guess McMahon for the postseason because, man, Nolan Jones sucked. Bryce Harper was MVP for a reason. He killed it. Coors effect. Clearly the Coors effect. Uh, Brendan Rodgers, really good year. I'm glad we were patient with him. Let him develop. Killed it at second base. We already talked about Terrence Bryant. Zach Veen had a solid, solid year. And then MJ Melendez also starting to put some put a good season together. And Tovar, he's improving. He's improving. Uh, but really wish he would be doing a little bit better so we are going to be facing the dodgers let's go see what stupid crazy lineup they have honestly besides pca that is a dodgers lineup they do have nola and lazardo but i don't know i feel like we can beat them all right soroka game one versus nola we win two to one and we win five to one next up we'll be taking on the padres which we already saw their pitching, which is gross. Urias, Burns, Musgrove. That's pretty good. Bullpen looks pretty solid too. 
And then their lineup, Tyro Estrada. It gets up to an 83, really? He looks pr pretty good. Wow. Okay. Uh, Yelich is on the team. Machado, Tatis, Bogarts, Greg Ridgeway, uh, Tavares. Okay. Trevor Story chilling on the bench. Uh, what is this team? All right, please sack gets game number one. We lose game number two. We also lose. We win the third. Sensatella keeps us alive. I trust my my rookie, or I guess second year pitcher. There it is. There it is. There it is. Ten to two. We're taking on the Mets now in the NLCS. Let's see what we have here. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What do we have? Lindor, Nimmo, McNeil, Beatty is called up. He's an eighty nine. 43 home runs was he in the mvp race um let's let's go back and check i should have went the other way he was i missed that wow dang okay um let's go back to the mets now Beatty, austin meadows is usually good in franchise telez fraley christian walker francisco alvarez pitchers okay all right yeah this that offense alone might that that wins you games right there so here we go please sack is gonna get game number one soroka marquez perfect we are 2-0 3-0 we sweep them and we're gonna be taking on the angels okay so what do the angels have here and key brian hayes bobby wood jr Ooh, talk about the left side of the infield trout william Contreras, brandon woodruff taylor brandon woodruff that means they've got otani that shouldn't be happening that shouldn't be happening um yeah that's did he get MLB plate appearances? He didn't. Okay, so I hope they put Otani back in the lineup, but like at the same time, that that's a little worrying. It doesn't show that he's getting at bats, so I'm assuming it is Otani getting the at bats. Yeah, he's got four. Okay, he's getting the at bats. So that they're just they're just showing that. Okay, so okay, so the CPU will adjust it to put Otani in the lineup. That's good. All right, let me go back and take a look at that lineup. So I mean, Otani Taylor Ward. Olivares is a weird one, but Otani and up, like that's a good lineup with Otani, Suarez, Sandoval, Glass now a break. Like that's, yeah, this is a tough matchup for sure. All right, World Series time. Plesak versus Woodruff. Game one, we lose. Soroka, game two, we lose. That's tough. We win that one. We win this one. There it is. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. So game six, here we are at home. We got to, we got to wear the purples gotta wear the purples this is too clean of a uni and you know what please having a really actually all three Ooh, felix D all five of my starters talk about a squad and we're gonna be t oh man they've got otani on the bump it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough we're gonna have to play perfectly a good start with a walk a strikeout a single first and third i'm swinging with bryce harper i can't tell bryce harper to sack fly he gets the run in and then that's it okay so i'm fine with that we get the run in we capitalize in the first we we at least take the lead and we have the advantage against otani like we gotta score when we get those opportunities and we did it and so far i'm liking what i'm seeing first and second mj melendez bases loaded for tovar ah, i need him to i need him to get the run in there and the sack fly ties it up which is tough like that's what i'm saying we get those runners in scoring position we gotta take advantage of it like right here bryce harper <sighs> i really don't want to go to game seven i really don't want to go to game seven that's a good that's a good lead off double right there a fly out a walk tovar brings in the run this time he capitalizes and they take out otani bases loaded for robert Grand slam, Luis Robert, and that right there, that might be game. I'm going to take out Plesak. He is a little bit tired. Let's be smart with it. We have three righties coming up. Let's go to Alcala, who I know is our setup guy, but we don't really have the best righties in the bullpen, which could have been an issue. We had too many lefties, so that's a, that's a big oops on my part. I'm going to let Alcala come in, and let's see what happens here. A pop-up, a strikeout, and gets Otani. There we go. Six to one. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. A double to start it off, a pop up, a ground out, and a line out. So you know what? We'll take out Ocala now. We don't need it. We don't need Duvall yet. Ward, Walsh, Rendon. Let's go with. Let's go crochet. A fly out, a pop up, and for Colorado's first World Series. There it is. There we go. We've done it. The grand slam by Robert, Tovar with an RBI, and also who is the other one? 
who had the first RBI? Who had the first RBI? I don't remember now. Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper did. MVP was MJ Melendez, and Bryce Harper was the playoff MVP with seven home runs and 15 RBIs. Good Lord. Mike Trout had five home runs. William Contreras had seven home runs. Okay. Take a look at the team as a whole. I mean, look at these ERAs and whips. Look at the numbers by the starting rotation. Talk about pure domination. Look at Felix Diaz coming in in his first postseason appearance. Dominates. I mean, even Fowler, he only pitched five innings, so he probably allowed a couple runs, but the whip being .8 is fantastic. The bullpen definitely did struggle besides Crochet, Alcala, and Doval, so half the bullpen struggled. And then you look at the lineup, Quan, Robert, he, he turned it on when it needed to be turned on, and that's all that matters. McMahon performed, Harper, Rogers, Bryant, Zach Veen, ah, but you know what? I'm happy with what the team did. I have really liked the team that we put together here, and that's the Rockies rebuild. We won the World Series with the Rockies. We completely shifted this team. We've got crazy pitching depth. We've got crazy prospects in the organization. I like what we did with the squad, and I hope you did too. If you did, thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and enjoyed the content. And of course, in the comment section, let me know your MVP picks. That's it. Catch you in the next one. Peace.